Let's go on fishing Sunday. I am. Let's go. Let's go. I am. I'm in. What we? <laughs> you put that cat down. Yeah. The cat's in. I was trying to be a Bond villain. I apologize. Yeah. It's warm by this fire, Buck. <laughs> We're not even in the fire. We need to we jump in cool, the current. We got to cool off in the current. We- I just want everyone to know, I mean, it, it, we say it all the time, you, you have seven best friends when you tune into us every week. And it's wild because we used to say that, but now it's so real. And, and, <laughs> and it was just a real existential morning, guys. <laughs> Got a <little> existential. <laughs> Did you sure drift them? Well. <laughs> That's a Yes. That's what the Canadians say. No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> if there is a traditional Canadian saying, no, no bueno. bueno. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rut and River Pursuits podcast. Podcast. You are in the current. This is Reality Outdoor Radio, where our mission is to get you in the outdoors by connecting you with the people, skills, and products you, you can, can trust. trust. You can trust them. I'm Steve. I'm Will. It's Bucky. I'm Kyle. Guys, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this month's sponsor. The guys over at Quest Hunt Co. have developed the biggest and baddest whitetail deer tournament the hunting community has ever seen. Ooh. This tournament's currently in seven states, and it's now coming to Pennsylvania. I love the Pennsylvanias. For whitetail hunters all across the state, here's how it works. Get yourself a partner. We set this up for two-person teams. Got them. Once you're signed up, you'll be competing with everyone in your state. Your team is scored on the total gross inches of your two best combined bucks. Nice. The top 10 teams per state will receive prize packages totaling an excess of $50,000. Me and Deke are splitting a bunch of that. Mm -hmm. The tournament culminates with a postseason banquet where all prize-winning deer are officially scored. And if that's not enough, amazing discounts from vendors across the board just for signing up and monthly giveaways. Get out of town. I, it's it's uh, it's incredible. Sign up for this epic tournament. Get all the details by checking out questhuntco.com. That's questhuntco.com. Tell them Rutten River Pursuit sent you. Yeah, I'm really psyched to see how this uh, Quest Hunt Co. tournament in Pennsylvania shakes out. Yeah, they're doing some cool stuff, man. Yeah, it's some epic first giveaways. Year for it, so. so you, I saw some pictures of you guys actually doing some things to get ready for said hunting season coming up. Yeah, There's a lot. Well, I, yeah. I don't even know. Are we to ready start. to talk about that yet, or do we want to like? I think ease a lot happened that. way jump before the that in our week. My, my jump in the gun. A lot went on this last. Who week. Who did something boring this week? Uh, that's that's me. I yeah, went to work, man, Steve. Went, yeah, well, boring. I went to work. That's not what I'm saying. Um, like, who did the least? Because that person should talk. Because I'm probably gonna bogart the whole thing. well let's just get into it then so what did you do this week i i don't even remember it was fairly uneventful no, was, did you fish at all no this you was didn't. The, no whoa I, I did, did you not, camp at all we did not camp at all did you pretend the did you like spray off the camper or clean the no, i know we, what i did we went to a that's cool Thanks, we went Kyle. to a sunflower oh. field that was as close and picked a few so you, hunt, you hunted sunflowers we hunted, i went scouting yeah <laughs> sun is socks. that is that pre-season I sunflower did some pre-season sunflower scouting season. in a sunflower yeah. field yeah gotcha no that that's it nothing <laughs> Did you hang some pedal cams? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is some hard hitting flowers. No, yeah. I've been oh, traveling. I've been flowers. out, yeah. but I'm I'm really glad to get back again. This has been Into a really, the grind. A really, really, really busy summer. Yeah, you've been on vacations me. a lot. It hasn't even been vacations lately. It's been you know traveling with work. I thought you vacationed a lot. Mm-hmm. I think we brought on a guy who just goes on vacation constantly. Really? Pikarowski. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about He's it. He's a busy man. He's vacationing again this week. He's and hardcore vacation. like a world In tropical traveler. storm. Kyle, you of all people have the least room to talk. What? Mr. 
Mr. Beach House. Mr. Beach House. Spend half of August in All uh, right. Well, that, that's true. I, I did spend. You were there again this past weekend, weren't you? Yeah, but that there was other but, but, stuff but, going but, on. But, but I was just at the beach. It was just the beach, Stevie. Come on well, now. What was I going, did, what's I did some it? other What'd you do related down there? things. Really? Yeah. We'll uh, talk about the beach first. Yeah. You What'd know, you do there? Does it sound a lot like other podcasts? <laughs> Should we just fast forward to the part where I say, <laughs> so you got skunked? <laughs> Stevie, I, I learned my lesson. Or I didn't I, go for sure. I didn't even go. Because <laughs> I, I knew There it better. is. Okay. Gotcha. Because oh, nobody hard... catches anything in Jersey. That's, but <laughs> that's some hard hitting beach talk. There we go. Fast forward. Fast forward. Okay. I did pick up some new broadheads. Did, what'd you get? Well, slow roll this one. Yeah. Everyone, drum roll. Blah, 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 blah. Surprisingly, you know, I'd like to change up my broadheads from year to year. Did you, did you get, get some Grim Reapers? The Husqvarna's? No, no. I. <laughs> So I did two two different things here. I got a fixed blade and an expandable. Okay. okay. Call me crazy. 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 Hey, yeah. crazy. So I picked up the Muzzy Tro cars okay. and the NAP kill zones. I thought um, Tro car was a hook. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> Maybe the, they make- the Muzzy hook broad, broadhead. <laughs> The tro car people make more than one kind of barb. Well, good on them then. Just to glad they work. diversified. <laughs> They're in the medical field <laughs> too. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Tro Holy cars. buckets. <laughs> but uh, just it's a so, style of tip. It's like a. It's so, Kyle. Yes. Uh, let me ask you a question though. I, I'm ask fairly what? new to this. Mm-hmm. Go uh, on. This archery thing. I can help you if yeah. you need it. Well, you see, it's yeah. it's yeah. the first time I think I've ever heard somebody say I have. Bought in some fixed blades and some expandables. I know. I'm crazy like that. So, you know, I wanted to try fixed blades. Um, you know, I looked through a couple different options and the, I like the shape and the kind of the overall appearance of the true cars. They don't seem to be too big and they're, sh- they're a shorter fixed blade. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like that would help them well, in the fl- in the flight path. Let, let's stop a second. Go ahead. What makes one fixed blade better than another? Because to me, you're just looking at a couple sharp edges there. Steel. Zinging yeah. through so the, uh, Ryan's zinging not through here. The and I just there, I get nervous when you guys start getting into hard hitting archery talk. <laughs> well, you without, can't bring with, it up without expecting well, we to just let something Steve, like that there's go. A, there's we don't couple, have our parachute Ryan or here. No. There's a couple. What? thought processes um, give me one so there are some fixed blades that are completely one piece so it's all one piece of metal there's no replaceable blades no anything okay uh, a lot of guys like those because they're super durable um, that's got to be a heavy chunk of steel ain't it uh, they, they, they measure yeah. out the steels yeah, they're they're uh, you can get them manufacturing very, processes. Yeah. The whole head is one m- machined out of one block of steel. Yep, or yeah, or whatever they're using. Yeah, um, so that's one option. <clears throat> I wanted to at least try the fixed blades this year because you know throughout my archery career I've only shot um, expandables. Yeah, and um, you know I feel like the fixed blades kind of give you a little bit marg- more margin for error in the sense of you know if your shot's a little forward then you're going to get a lot better penetration if you end up hitting that shoulder blade or if you hit some you know if you hit a rib or hit high then you can get a little bit pe- better penetration and all this stuff and, and I just want to tell her you know yeah get it out there all this stuff can be argued yeah yeah but w- it's such a such a sensitive subject to nauseam to the, yeah you know so <laughs> but there there's reliability of having only fixed versus yep. uh, have the, you the ever had an expandable fail uh i wouldn't say i've had expandables fail um i have had issues in the past with penetration on expandable heads so. And and I do know that the expandables can give you some issues if the angle is off when you're in a tree stand so mm-hmm. high up that it can, it can deflect. You can lose uh, a lot of uh, I, I, momentum. You can and, make a case yeah. for either one. Yeah. Do you lose? Do but you it's lose also saved my butt in the expansion 
Yes. And that, process. yeah, that, and that's one of the arguments for fixed versus okay. the expandable is the expandables do take up a lot more of the kinetic energy to deploy their heads. Fair enough. Um, but then in that same token, you can also argue in favor of the expandables because they provide you a larger cutting area and can basically inflict Does more that damage. Really matter if you make if somebody a shooting shot. a 75 pound bow like you. Um, yeah, it, it can it definitely, definitely matter. Yeah. Like, so for example, if you hit a deer more energy further back with an expandable, not that it's going to guaranteed kill that deer. You'll be able to recover that deer, but I've seen deer that have been hit further back with an expandable that were recovered a lot easier than say, if you would have hit that with a fixed blade guilty as charged, save yeah. my butt. So in, in that sense, it's a very valid argument for the expandables where they can help you recover a marginally hit deer but is, is the, the head on the arrow on expandable bigger. Uh, Is that why there's more? Actually, n most expandables, the heads are actually smaller because the blades are basically tucked in to the head itself and then they don't deploy they fly, until... They're, allegedly, they fly truer and then they don't deploy until they are on impact. Okay. Correct. Well, we're going to have to dive <laughs> into this further whenever we've got the, the right. whole yeah. show to... Right. But, um, yeah... The, but the the thought process for me was I wanted to at least try. So you want to try? Them. Yeah, I want to okay. try the trio cars out. See how they, you know, I'm not sold on one or the other yet. I want to see how the trio cars flew. Um, you know, just try and tune them up. See what kind of groups I can get with them versus the uh, the kill zones. How many packs did you get? Just a pack of each. Um, you know, so, so that's that's only like half your deer limit for your area, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But uh, uh. Um, you know, sometimes you can get the replacement blades for both of those so okay. you're not buying completely new heads I, I i have one last question on that go ahead phil. go ahead phil is it going to add another layer of double guessing well do i have the right broadhead on for this particular set oh you know, at, with you, me yeah. absolutely i always and are you going to be able to like commit and say what i put on today is what i'm going to shoot yeah at, yeah at, right. the, at the end of the day you know once once i shoot both of them you know and have a good feel for which one i like better which one i feel is tuning better out of my bow then you know that's that's what i'm going to stick with well good on you man because I, I i wouldn't I wouldn't want to add that extra level. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, second guessing myself and my decisions. So understood. Yeah, Stevie. Stevie. No, back to Stevie. Oh. Yeah. What's You're, happening, back, guys? Back to you, Steve. <laughs> back to you, Stevie. Still not <laughs> yes. do anything else. <laughs> no, it's been about the same last ten minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, he didn't go fish Thanks or for asking. <laughs> yeah. This is where right. Kyle says, "Anybody else?" <laughs> now that we beat uh, beat the broadheads to death, we barely scratched the surface. Oh, stop you want to beat it to death? No, nope. let's no, do no. this. No, we don't. Now that we doled the blades on the broadhead topic. <laughs> Phil, uh, you and Will had a pretty eventful week. I've been so excited to hear about this. I've been avoiding asking questions to you guys. I'm glad you asked, Steve, yeah. about it. What do you want to hear about first? I want to hear about the whitewater rafting trip. That was that was a fun day. That's what I want to hear about. It yeah. was a great day in let's, my book. Let's start at the beginning, where we always start. At the beginning. Yeah. Um, this is something my wife and I did with our friends last year. Yeah. But we wanted to kick it up a notch and we went Bam. to a different place. Instead of up in the Poconos, we mm. went southwest of here in, into Maryland, almost Morgantown, Virginia, to Friendsville, Maryland. Okay. Off of 68s. Off of six, off uh, the Interstate 68s. 68s oh. Right off. And uh, Well, you weren't far from Pick then, were you? Uh, actually, we were about an hour and 10 minutes away from past pick's house oh so you were down there mm -hmm. okay. yeah yeah and uh past cumberland yeah oh and, and we happened it was on the upper yawk i guess is what how they pronounce it it's just, it's y-o-u-g-h yeah the y-o-u-g-h yawk mm -hmm. it eventually flows into pittsburgh and turns into the ohio's yeah yeah and go Ohio. eventually down through the mississippi and why not through that watershed nice but uh first of all the drive down into this part of the country holy cow guys beautiful the mountains elevation up close to 3,000 foot you're right in the heart of the Appalachians yeah. Aren't you? yeah yeah it was so pretty such a pr how about it will 
Mm -hmm. This time of year, too, all the green. Beautiful. It was cool. Um, Did you stop for breakfast anywhere? Yeah, but that's that's not. It was egg. nothing. Yeah. It wasn't existential. It wasn't existential or anything <laughs> like that. We needed to get down there by noon because that. Was I, all right, I'm sorry. I, w- I won't let is you. This high noon. I want encourage slow rolling. But uh, it, it, this is was a trip that we did, and we wanted to always expand out to friends and yeah. get more people because we had such a blast last year, and we wanted to share that experience with mm-hmm. people and plus kick up the let's the level. get this out of the way what stevie would you do that would you white water I, I did once when i was a teenager and i have no plans to ever do it again what happened i fell out a couple times <laughs> what that's right one, once or twice was like me goofing around because i was a teenager and i didn't realize how fast the water was even when it didn't look like it was moving fast it was really moving fast and the one time I, I flew out was when we went down over rapids, and it was wasn't even a, you know, a significant. It was I, maybe a class three or something like that. Did you bail out the back like a Navy SEAL? I flipped out the back. Yeah, I did the same yeah. thing on this and trip too. L- luckily, you know, my my one brother was there, and he's you know was was strong enough to sling me up over the side. I think they all are. Like all your brothers, oh, are yeah. strong enough to get you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they're big dudes. Well, yeah, any of my brothers, you know, could have could have uh, hoisted me he up just, at that point. It skipped his. Yeah, his. his I genes. don't know what happened That's there. Why we call you Little Stevie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Little Stevie. I guess. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that's for another. That's episode. like your origin story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so so I don't. I, as much as I love the water, I just. That left a left a, 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 a bright sour taste, taste in your mouth. Yeah, I, yeah I, I almost hit my head on a rock when I fell out the last time. Really? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I'm sorry yeah. you had that. See, I had. Just, I'm not. I don't mean to to down your. No, sorry. no, because I but rain I, on your parade. I have had he, the, the he opposite of experiences. So I know. I know. We were talking about it on the way over. Today. I have so much fun. Like I literally start laugh out loud. I have so much fun. He and said get, the first thing he said was, "Stevie would love this," and I said, "No, he wouldn't." And he said, "Yes, he How would." Did, you can't, I think he would. I, I have I, a hard time enjoying myself just being on a boat, unless like I'm eating a meal or something <laughs> to distract me or fishing. Yeah, so if I'm not fishing on a boat, it has to be like centered around well, a meal. Well, you're in luck, Steve, because and they're rafts. Yeah. Not boats. Or, or rafts. What if I feed you matter. Skittles every once in no, a while? No, it has to be like a dinner cruise. Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, Steak some, and potatoes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So gotcha, prime gotcha. ribs, all that's okay. the best there. Steve, you can have your own podcast <laughs> someday soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, how old would but t- Let me tell you a little bit about the Upper Yacht. They, it's damn controlled. And this is so interesting. Really? When, yes. When we got there, the, the river, they, they're like, there's your put in and take out and all that stuff. And, mm-hmm. and the river was like a foot stupid low. Yeah. Like, it, like it, this is going to be, it looked, it didn't look bassy. It looked rock bassy. Oh yeah. It looked really, really yeah. shallow, you know? Um, so, uh, apparently it's a very, very awesome trout fishery, um, because it's dam controlled. Okay. And they, they control the temp, right? Like bottom flow dam. Yeah, they okay. control the temp all year long based on te- water temperature. Okay. So trout can be there. Uh, anyway, long story short, we get there. It just doesn't look like it, we're rafting anywhere. I'm like, th- this is funny. So uh, I didn't know that once we got there, everything was being timed based on the bubble, which is... The release Opening of the, the gates. Dam. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and you have to give it some time to get ahead of you, oh. too. You know, like, and then you get in, like, the middle of it because you eventually get to the front. How long's the bubble? Oh, they, they have it all figured out at the time. We, we didn't have to do any of that figuring. Okay. But. So that's, like, public information, then, I guess. I'm sure. They, yeah. They, yeah. they know yeah. a guy. Yeah. Yeah, they know people. And, and know it's people. a real narrow river, mm-hmm. it's not very wide. In a lot of spots. So, and I will say this, Bucky's gone whitewater rafting, absolutely loves it. He's a whitewater rafting nugget right now. He's just, he's, he's loves a fiend. It. Yeah. And uh, I've never done it. 
So I didn't know this. Oh, yeah, and I'm supposed to be some outdoorsy dude, I guess. You know what? Why would I not have white water raft by now? Kyle did it last year. Yeah, right. Or this uh, beginning of the summer. Where were you in Lehigh's? Uh, no, the gorge. Yeah, right? yeah. I was in the uh, the U or the the new. The new, yeah, the right. New River. South, even further. Yeah, further south. Than where we were. Like so the West Virginia and Kentucky border. I heard that could be fun, too. Absolutely. Well, I've heard that. What do they have? What, are they, what rapids uh, they have? Uh, they go to class five on a good day. Yeah. So. Good gravy. We did, too. Yeah. I do need to say this, though. I knew things were going to step up a level, though. I'm glad when they <laughs> when they handed us helmets and on the way down we were talking and, and Dusty goes uh, oh I wonder if they'll make us wear helmets and I'm like oh no they'll never be we'll be all right they're, they're not <laughs> helmets you know we get there <laughs> and they start laying out life jackets which we you know wore on the other one when we went on you the said upper pass. Lehigh and uh, no I I took that I'm not <laughs> stupid uh, I may be. Cavalier, but <laughs> not stupid. And uh, then they had helmets, and I'm like, "Oh, this just got serious." Yeah. And I'm like, "Uh oh." Uh, you the, wanted to the kick life, it up a notch. The life jackets too were interesting because there's like, it was like a, a NHRA um, five point harness. Really? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you are strapped in every way possible yeah. so that. They're someone tight. can it grab wasn't you. It like the five for ten dollar ones, orange ones. Yeah, yeah. And, no. And it's with a flap on the back, up nobody your shoulders. It wasn't yeah. tied off in a sweet bow. No, you know, like <laughs> it's so that they can grab you out of the oh, water. Yeah, and yeah. they they Fire. make them tight, and yeah. they'll rip you out of the water. It doesn't matter how big you are, they'll rip you out of the wow. water. So it's funny. Uh, th- 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 that was something very interesting. I never had that kind of equipment on. Um, Bucky, do you know the drop and elevation of the river? Like it w- we dropped approximately twenty five hundred feet. Wow! And I, the statistic that Mark, our guide, and we'll get into how they divide you up here in a second, but over one section, over one section of the rapids or falls, we dropped in a one mile section. The entire trip was approximately ten miles, but okay. in a one mile section, we dropped nine hundred feet approximately. Wow. That's and that was a lot. I, I've never seen water move like that with that much force and over such a period uh, at length. I mean, yeah. we did it, and it was and it was fun, guys. It was insane. Uh, we there was some scary moments. I'm not gonna lie. Really? You yeah, know, roller coaster. Yeah, it was an <laughs> absolute roller coaster. And and uh, towards the end of it, I, I said to the the guy. Um, there's like these kind of medium rapids and mm-hmm. I'm, it was nothing at the end. It just kind of was <laughs> like, out. that's it. That was, well, it, it felt like in the beginning I would have been worried about those rapids. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, but know? after what you but just after went through, you've yeah. gone through class fives and class fours. Yeah. The, these ones, these class twos and threes were just absolutely like speed bumps. It was yeah. like nothing. And that's where I got dumped out, actually. Oh <laughs> it was, and it's over one of these falls. And then and, and what happens in front of some of these falls, if there's a, something else underneath the water, it calls what they call a hydraulic. And it's just where the water gets moving faster than the river, actually, from falling over that object. So it kind of backs up and you kind of get held up. Yeah, you well, stall. Well, when we stalled coming over the fall, my corner of the raft went down further than the rest of the raft, and I did a complete diver back roll out. Ooh. Now, diver my, bucky my, mind you, uh-huh. I, I'm going to go back to the beginning now at this point before I carry on with this like fall. Back to the beginning of this. When they put take, in? Right before we put in, they have a very lengthy... Yeah, safety talk. Very worthwhile safety talk, mm-hmm. and and I want to and I want to cover this because I felt absolutely safe. You did going in after this, knowing that there was a plan. We went well, over. I mean, it's safer if you already have a knowledge of it. For me, I it was nerve wracking because they're. <laughs> reiterating over and over again telling you that you're going to die probably but you're not going to die 
<laughs> just don't die. But just don't die. And, and they, we'll, <clears throat> they put you into rafts that are almost like a kayak raft, and they're four man rafts. Yeah. And every raft has an experienced guide on it. You have to. You it's have to. The law. It's the law. State law. State law. And I wouldn't do it any other way. That's for sure. It might even be a United Nations law. So did you you fly out of this raft and you're just kind of hanging out in this hydraulic? I no, we had already current? gotten pushed out a little bit okay, more. Okay, so you're not sitting in this, but hydra- we're moving. So the you're but wait, moving. I didn't tell you about the safety talk. But wait, there's back more. at yeah. the beginning. But wait. Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. So at the safety. It, so they're they're four man rafts, three three customers and a guide, and these rafts are specific, specially designed to auto bilge or bail, and they're okay. basically a big huge tube made into like to make the sides of the raft, yeah. and another like flat inflatable raft, a little bit more cut into a boat type of a des- uh, shape mm-hmm. that's l- literally lashed to the bottom of those walls with rope or cordage yeah and it just it i i was bungee. amazed i was amazed bungee. about how, how cool and how efficiently these things worked yeah yeah and uh, so that was and every boat had at least one and our guide had two <clears throat> hand lines that they could quickly toss out uh, you know line bags okay that they could toss out to people and then as soon as you started doing it, and, they, and we, the first thing we started off, they called. They said, "This is what we call the warm ups. Th- these rapids are called the warm ups, and it yeah. kind of gets you used to it." And and that's where you kind of learn. And they teach you different paddles, and like when they say, "Give me two strokes," and we, they, they, that's where you, you work got, on everything they, they talk about. You didn't. You're have prepared. To think. Yeah. Well, you didn't have Sounds to think. Right. They told you everything. You learn yeah. things here. It, it just wasn't a scenic well, tour. Even beyond that, like they told you, paddle right as you need to left, know it. Hard right, reverse, right back, reverse, reverse you know. left, and they told Two you two paddles everything. forward. Yeah, it just everything was mapped out really, really well. And, and were they like building you guys up like? at the beginning of each set of rapids because like when I did it like they like pretty much walked you through the whole rapid before mm-hmm. you even like hit yeah, the rapid he would tell okay. us what the plan was and what was cool is our guy you could tell had done it before and he was doing things a little bit differently than some of the others and 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 what I wanted to say is and once we started down these you saw the safety in mind because there was other people in kayaks other guides in kayaks and they would go down first and then certain rafts, and you learned by the end of the day, certain guides were those guys. Okay. And you would go down and you would go through first and then you would stay maybe sometimes in the middle of that particular rapid or at the end of it and you would stand watch. So if anybody got dumped, you could be there for a safety line immediately. Mm. Um, so everything, I mean, we wanted to have fun, but safety was still the utmost. Yeah. I, 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 I I was amazed. I was very I impressed. You can't with do it. it another way. You could. It's too much. Yeah. Class fives or yeah. I don't. A lot of power. It's legit. Yeah. So when you came out, you weren't necess- You knew you were going to be rescued. There was a plan you already. Were be all right. there, yeah. And we and it's just like in the medical business when we do advanced life support care, like in emergent situations. Uh-huh. There's a plan, and you trust that training. You trust that plan, and, and you go with it. And I was lucky, fortunate. The way I w- went off back, I immediately, as soon as I came up above the water, yeah. I was facing the raft. The okay. guide was right there. I already, I, he goes, give me my, give me your hand, give me your hand. Well, that was opposite of the first thing they told you to do in the rapid. The first rule is always get your feet up. Don't get it caught down because if you get it caught down, you could get it stuck in a, in a rock yeah. and it, the current would push you forward and drown. Yeah. So the guide immediately, give me your hand. Guy trusted him, gave him my hand, got my feet up, saved him. And he goes, I said, what do you want to do now? He goes, can you kick in? I said, heck yes. We kicked in. Boom. And we kept on going. It happened that quick. Wow. Boom. Done. David Hasselhoff. Dude, you- I felt great doing that. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Ran. Nobody else knew it. Oh, nobody yeah. saw it. Nobody saw that go down. And in fact, like, I guess one of the things. So is, your pride wasn't hurt? No, I didn't care if somebody saw it. I had fun. I came popped up. Wow. You know. Yeah. yeah and he's still <laughs> worried. Like, get get out. He's like, get in, get in, get in. And I'm, I'm like, okay. I'm like, loud. and I'm like, oh, yeah, I, be, I should take this serious because I'm in the middle of a class five yeah. rapid right now going yeah. down this sucker and I need to get back in. Did so, you? oh, man. I, I'm getting hyped up, guys. How Too long hyped. of a trip is it from put in to take out? 
four hours. So do you stop for lunch? No. No. So there's not like a, you know you start at twelve, you start at noon or yeah, something. You yeah. grab some, a snack and then roll yeah, out. You grab a light lunch. But what you. happens to your point? I'm glad you brought it up. Yes, is they had food for us when we got back immediately. Really? And our takeout is right below the shop. Okay, I got I got to ask because I know people are going to want hot know. dogs. No, we'll get to that. Pulled pork. What if you have to go to the bathroom during those four hours? You know, I would bail out. Yeah. To a, in a calm area. You have to hold it? No, I would just bail out and then do a water evacuation. Yep. <laughs> downstream, facing downstream. So well, you could face an, upstream, An aqua dump, so basically. You, <laughs> yeah, aqua dump. Dump you, the bilges. Nobody. So you, you, you don't, don't have time to think about really? going to the bathroom. No. It's a class five, dude. If you're thinking that. I drink or a lot a class, of water. A class four. And then like being in the water. You can pee your pants, dude, because you're no going to get knows. wet. No one knows. People are yeah. trying to fight for their Maybe lives. Maybe this is too yeah, much. Nobody lives. cares because half of them probably pee their pants already. Just, so yeah. what do you have for, for like, that's like second lunch, I guess, at Pulled four pork. o'clock. Pulled pork, hot Pulled dogs. Pork, really? Some hummus and uh, what? Crackers. Yeah, nice spread. It was yeah. Yeah. hummus. Did, did they they even had some beers? Yes, they even what? had beer. Yeah, oh. beer taps behind the, yeah. Jeez. Yinglings. People after my own heart. Go figure. And then I didn't uh, realize this until we were done, but there's, I guess, this common thing amongst these guides that come down is um, if a guide spills their entire boat, if their boat flips. Yeah. They have to buy a round of beers for all the other guides. And there's oh. like, it could be four to 20. So, it, oh boy. Yeah, so a just, lot of beer. If you had 20 boats, yeah. Wow. That's, that's 20 a chunk boats of for guides and then the support people in kayaks. Also, you got to remember that too. Oh, so they got to buy a round for everyone. Yeah, that might be a well, round could they be a case. And everyone, well, all the guides, all the, guides, the, all the people, okay. all the people yeah. that work together. That's kind of their pride. Did thing, anyone? Like, did anyone cheese it? Yeah, there was yeah, quite really? a few. Yeah, this one gal cheesed it twice. The whole raft. I felt for her. Her dumped her whole crew out the oh, entire time. They heart. were stuck underneath it. One was kind of serious. Yeah, was I it? mean, yeah. I grabbed the one uh, lady, and she definitely had. She was wide eyed. She didn't. I don't know what she was thinking. It's not Something to shake happened. you up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there is an age limit. They recommend oh, 16 and up, but there were some younger ones there. And I think those parents thought twice they wouldn't have done it again. Really? I, I mean, I, there's no way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put a young kid on there. Not no way. And, and I'm adventure adventure Bucky. Adventure Bucky all day long. All day mm-hmm. long. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. do that. My like Bryce is. I wouldn't have had him on there any any younger. It's funny though. I, I do. I will say this: going to an adventure outing with the Buckmans uh, is not typical by any stretch. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it but I am family. so glad they're all. You know, they're enjoying this and they're embracing this adventurous kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Hell you yeah! Know? So good on you guys. Hey, it was we nice. had a Thanks blast. For, yeah. Lana and I had a blast. Um, it was nothing short of amazing and spectacular and beautiful. It was a great day. Um, it, you know, it Start was to a finish. Yeah, it was a rush. So, uh, something to check out. I, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't unsafe, but I don't know if a class five is this, the way to start. <laughs> No, it's the way your, to start. Your white water rafting career. <laughs> I think you would have been bored start. with something less. Who knows, bud? Yeah. But I don't know. That, and that was, I'm, who knows? I don't regret it, but I don't know that. If I, you, it was a good start. I think anything less, I would want to make it over a day or two and fish along the way. Yeah. That's what I would want to do. Mm. I could well, get behind that plan. I figured you might. There you go. Yeah, but you well, guys, there you go. We got, uh, you know, you definitely learn a lot while you're while you're doing it for sure. But any, you, what else did we get into, boy? I yeah, think you I guys, think there's a lot more to talk about besides this. Well, we we little, got out of the current and we got into the woods. Mm-hmm. That's true. I saw some of that. That's a good segue. It, it, yeah, it was it it was a f- couple of fun days in the woods too. And we worked it along was, the way. It, it was, was work. It, it was work, but I had fun. I mean, it was. We were on a mission, yeah. and like everything you do, you just you're you're fighting something. You're fighting 
the time that you have or you're fighting you're in between storms you're like you don't you never have the time the money and the energy that you need when you need it when you need it yeah it's a commodity for sure so totally I, I think this holiday weekend was extended. We definitely had a, a, a rough balance between, you know, we just, we pushed really hard, ended up running out of energy and time uh, the one day. Uh, the other day, we, you know, it was just a grind. So yeah. anyway, long story short, that, that's kind of just setting it all up. Uh, lots of, uh, lots of deer recon. Uh, putting up some new cameras uh, and stands. Uh, so never, never hunted these areas. Yeah. We find we found them in turkey season. So, how many cameras did you set up? Uh, we have three right now. There's another one to go up. Okay, but uh, probably <laughs> you know who knows what we we'll end up getting. Yeah, you know, and they're not. They haven't been soaking long either. And it will. I'm. I'm excited. To, to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm excited w- with the stands we placed. I'm excited. Kyle, did you see any s- scrapes where you are? Uh, not yet, but it's starting to get close to where they're, they'll start. We got a scrape some- pop up in a week last week. Oh, that's so awesome. I was there the week before, yeah. weekend before, this week. We got a scrape. That's good. So uh, I, I, t- I consulted our good friend Andy Spittle. That would have been from August then, right? Potentially, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you're borderline doing math, Stevie. Sorry, it's late. Yeah, it was like literally last week. Yeah. So Uh, it just pops up. And Andy said that they, from time to time, they do, you know, scrapes. He said it might be a new buck in the, Hmm. they might be saying who's here and what's what. And it's just that communication situation. Well, it it's getting to that point too now where they're going to start getting getting hard horned and you know going to start going their separate ways yeah were you guys up uh at the mountain or were you guys at a couple different properties no we were at the mountain anybody seen anything on cameras yeah i i have uh i have one one good buck on uh one of the cameras at my house and then um you know, I have a couple other cameras that are out soaking that I haven't checked in probably two or three weeks, but I'll probably do a, you know, a card pool of all those here in the next week or two before the season to kind of yeah, reevaluate. Same here. I had one that was out a week. We got like a seven point that was on. And, uh, and then I have an old camera that was out, a really, really old camera that uh, I pulled and, and I'm going to, you know, just clean it up and, freshen up the batteries and stuff like that but anyway we got some velvet stuff on that did you but um mm-hmm. the pictures are just crap you know because it's just so old yeah um it needs to be replaced but i did uh put out a couple uh the brand new self cams okay so uh i have no clue uh i got the, the 26 megapixel deal so those will be some clear pictures <laughs> holla <laughs> holla <laughs> I also saw you guys put up a, a tree couch. <laughs> we did. We put up the hawk's Ooh. nest. That yeah. thing is Was massive. that hard to do? Uh, you know, it, it just, they have it designed well mm-hmm. so that you, it, it's fairly ergonomic, mm-hmm. but it, it, it's a two to three man job. I was just getting ready to interject. I'm glad we had three people. It would have been a, it would have been a tough tough sale for if it was just you and i i mean and that's because i'm not the strongest you're you're a beast you're stronger than you think you are so thank you buddy but it would have been tough but it's a two to three man job so how many stands you guys end up getting set up this weekend three three yeah three so far but there's i know it doesn't sound like a lot but there's we're also double and triple checking like the recon is this the right spot we're picking trees we're trimming trees that we think are going to work and they end up not being when we get you set know halfway arc. through yeah. and set up we're like this sucks this isn't going to work out so we you know start over on another tree there's trails everywhere blah blah blah, blah. you know like it's just the deliberation 
is <laughs> madness. Can, and and I, I, I want to say this is like my first real experience of going out and setting up tree stands. And I learned a ton doing this. And, and I also, I, I appreciate the fact that th- we were thorough enough to even decide plan B's, even in those areas, if we had to decide in a day after watching what happens, observing, I need to be 20 yards there. So what tree am I going to go to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have that, we already have that kind of pre-thought out at this point. I, you know, old can, dogs can learn new Can tricks. you overthink it or can you yes. spend more yes. time? Yes. Is, is, is that's there a danger was, in spending too much time out there? I wanted to say that because that's just a, it was a whole nother level of second guessing. Like yeah. I was asking Kyle about the broad, having the broadheads and the, uh, the fixed or the, yeah. or the broadheads. This was a whole nother level of second guessing. And, and golly, I mean, Deer hunting is nothing but second guessing yourself. Yeah. Are they even paying attention to the surroundings? Like right now, does it does it bother them? Do you think you guys? You oh being yeah. Up there? yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, so they, that's they not, know. So, so that's not something you don't want to spend. You want to spend as little time doing that as you can. Right, get in, do your stuff. Get, get in, out. get out. But that's the hardest part. Yeah, you know, and and. and keeping them on their travel routes and things like that like especially early season they're very very well defined travel routes between bedding and food yep. nothing's really terribly messing with them besides you know predators or whatever so they're just so as long as you don't set a blind in the middle of a trail or something like that you're well you can they're gonna go around it but like it's just the, something drastic like that you're they're, probably okay you just want to get it basically you want to get it set up so that they can continue their lifestyle yeah and they're just gonna with limited interruption yeah they're gonna think it's weird for a time or two but then nothing's gonna happen and they're gonna and blow by S- stevie to yeah to add into that too you know when you know, when guys are looking at their stand locations, you know, it's not just, oh, where where's all the sign right now? Because the deer adjust their patterns as the season goes on. You know, right now you have a heavy trail, you know, that could be going from, you know, bedding to soybeans. But, you know, as the beans get cut or go away, then they're going to be going from, you know, bedding to acorns or other. Yeah. It, it shifts yeah. with the season. So that's another thing that guys are always constantly thinking it's like you know is this a transition spot is this a funnel like there's all those things that are constantly going through a a deer hunter's head when he's trying to pick a stand is there like a is there a time of day that you don't want to be out there checking cameras you gotta get it I, i i guess there is but no like literally you just you just gotta just have you got to be brash enough to get in and get out and it you're going to mess up a day you're going to mess up three days it doesn't that Mm -hmm. you know but once you get out uh you know you just you kind of want to some i mean you can make an argument uh you you don't want to mess up their morning and in evening runs from bedding to feed Mm -hmm. so you're either going to want to catch them while they're bedding or while they're out in the fields or whatever, eating, whatever. But I think you just get in when you can and get out. I mean, that, and that's yeah. Well, un- and that's the unfortunate part about only having so much time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and part of that too, Stevie, is, is strategizing where you're putting your camera. You know, if, if you gotcha. know, you know, when or where you're going to be track going to your camera you know you don't want to be putting your camera in a bedding area if you're going to be going to check your camera in the middle of the day because right. you're going to be bumping deer off their beds you know so a lot of guys try and focus their camera setups you know on food on transition areas where you know the deer aren't getting to those spots until real early or real late so that way their chances of scaring a deer are minimalized so so with in that same vein when you're setting up a stand would you set a stand up on a feeding area or a bedding area or a a a travel route between the two or is there no is it 
there's wherever a good tree is there, in any three of this. So you can you can put a game plan together for all of them. Yeah. Yep. So you can hunt different time, different places for different times of the day, depending on when you have it can get out there. Is what I'm but, learning. Uh, typically, with betting, there's a lot of guys that will just make that a straight up sanctuary. Yep. Like they won't. You don't go into the betting area. Gotcha. You, I can see that. Sure. But there's guys that will hunt right on the skirt of that, <laughs> knowing that they're coming out at some yeah. point. And it's also, you know, time dependent too. Um, a lot of a lot of guys, you know, early season when the deer are kind of pattern in their patterns and you know going betting the food, betting the food. A lot of guys like just hunting the fringes of the food and you know catching the deer there. And then as the season progresses and you know the bucks are more likely to be on their feet as the rut gets closer, then yeah. guys will kind of increase their, their aggressive tactics and kind of move closer to the bedding areas, move closer to, you know, the natural funnels move, you know, just try and get to where the deer just are. Some guys will actually just hunt wherever Kyle puts the stand. It's true. Well, <laughs> this I, it sounds to me like this is something that, you guys are able to do because it's private land, right? Like this, you wouldn't have this That's, level of activity. No, you can. No, you can. You, you can. can. Yeah, you can. You just, like on uh, public land, you can absolutely do this. So you're talking right now. We're talking about the topography uh, of, of big woods. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it. There's there's so many things that it, it's maddening. So it's hard to pattern. It's hard to know. Like like and it's mountain woods. Yeah. Well, Andy kept talking about the macro. So we're we're hunting the big woods, which is the macro, and he's like, we got to get to the micro, which is where the deer actually are in the woods. So I mean, it all looks the same. Yeah. But there's trails, there's travel routes, there's beddings, everything yep. we talked about. So how do you know? That's the thing that we have to focus on. What does food look like? Is there uh, deer turds? Is there uh, well-defined trails? Yeah. Rubs, scrapes. Yeah. Are there fresh tracks? Are there old old rubs from last year? You're looking for all these signs you know what does it look very you know like we say it all the time this river looks very bassy yeah we kind of just know you know that there's got to be you hit a couple big rock ledges or whatever you're going to get in some bass deer are very similar like they just they have places and trails they they run on the benches and the ridges they like they they're uh they're bedding in very thick areas things like that you're yeah. just there's so much to look for it's maddening yeah. and, and we're just literally like again we don't have the safety blanket of ryan being here uh if, he was also a wealth of knowledge or even catfish you mm-hmm. know like it's just but if, if you're a public land like there's I, it would just seems to me like there's a lot more be a lot more competition a lot more that that's all part of it. It all factors yeah. in because yeah. you got a lot of the majority of the guys are aren't going to go in and do that kind to of the way. mountain. Yeah. So they're going to hunt, you know, not too far away from. Gotcha. Their, you know, they're going to hike, you know, three hundred yards, four hundred yards at the most. Uh, they're not going to go into. If you're yeah. willing to and hike back into public land and also pre-plan and put the time in into preseason scouting i think yeah definitely you you can do the same things and and will's spot on most dudes i would say 75 percent of them only go 400 yards into the woods really yeah and stevie to that we did our first year at the at the when we got the mountain you know when we got the Mm -hmm. 60 acres we we didn't hunt we hunted one spot with like two stands you know, we didn't, we didn't explore. It's been a while we, yeah. since I've been up there. I think that was the first, yeah, first or yeah. second. So yeah. it's just, it's very typical of, of people not to put the time in and put the miles in. And until you do it, you know. And actually, we, we are in the complete opposite direction. Like, it, it, it's a 180 from where we were. Really? Yeah, it just seems like, yeah. It, 
Stevie, to the public land point too as well. Um, you know, most guys that are successful at hunting public land, mm-hmm. you know, they're not just looking for deer activity. You know, they're they're, they're watching, masters of they're looking, watching dudes. Yeah, they're masters yeah. Of, of finding hunter activity. You know, so a lot of those guys, they're not just looking for deer sign. They're looking for you know, has somebody else been here? Are there cat eyes here? Are there, you know. Are there broken Short branches? Deer. Yeah. yeah. Is there flagging yeah. tape? All that stuff. Who's pushing deer where? Yep. Yeah. I love learning about this because, I mean, it, it It just seems like every every creature follows the same. Like whether you're talking about fish or deer or whatever, there, there's some universal Humans. rules of Pattern. nature. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. That... Uh, but that's like, comfort, though. Yeah. Times of that's the day. That's comfort yeah, like to like eating areas. Try bedding to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's where people like, and yeah. animals like comfort, and they yeah. don't like doing things that are uncomfortable or may not be familiar. I heard slash that. Not definitely safe, so. Mm-hmm. Class 5 rapid. Yeah. Tell me about it. Boy, what a. What a week. Understatement. Yeah, what a week. It's like a month, love it. a month packed into one week. Uh huh. Craziness. Oh, you know, it, another little like uh, extra sprinkle on the donut uh, about going out in those woods was the other night. I heard something I'd never heard before. What's that? A whole family of coyotes just going to town. At, at what about an hour before sundown or something like that where was yeah. this uh, up on a mountain too close to where we hunt deer Ooh. it was crazy yeah. really mm-hmm. yeah and I honestly am gonna get off the mountain and we go down to the Susquehanna uh-huh. uh, Susquehanna so after Ooh. catfish worked on my boat yeah oh yeah we had to go Test everything that we yeah, and you sure do, bud. Yeah. On the How did it go? Anna. We uh, we actually we gone out. Again. Forgive me for not getting to this sooner. <laughs> right, right, hey comrade. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right? we got back out on the Susquehanna for some catfish in action. Yeah, uh, everybody caught uh, some fish. Uh, we had a good time. Um, Ryan and uh, his son joined us. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's son, Corey. Corey Jimson. Corey Jimson. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, he had his Bass Raider out. Yeah. And uh, it was really cool. Logan was in and out. Like, he was not... I think there was just too big of a group for him to want to hang out. But he he was going, you know, hunting, he said. Why is he? For, you know, for big monster cats. Um, we, we had some wind that kind of fouled us up a little bit. But um, it was too much fun being out for uh, for me to really care. That small that channel cat that you had a picture of. Yeah. What what did you catch that on? Well, it was a sunfish. Really? Yeah. No kidding. But uh, I know that Madeira's yeah. and Corey Jimson were using uh, some kind of baloney or something. Stink yeah. bait. Did. It- I, garlic baloney. Did I tell you guys about my? Uh, I'll save it. But I did some what, catfishing at, at one of our camping trips here recently. And what'd you do? And uh, well, I tell us, about Steve. I'll, I'll save you got to slow roll this I'll, one. I'll save it in the yeah. next week's. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll slow roll. Oh, it things are heating week, up. So. Yeah, but anyway, it was a great time with those guys. Yeah. Absolutely had fun. Uh, you know, there's nothing like it tying off. And I think catfish and I fish till like two in the morning. I was wow. just going to ask, how late do you stay out? And I turned and burned. I, I, two in two in the morning, I got home, and then uh, mm. uh, and then I got up fairly early to be on the mountain with him. So I, I'm killing it. Yeah, I feel good too. I'm not beating myself up terribly. Are you drinking a lot of the uh, Mountain Ops Ignites? (laughs) I've I've had some. Yeah, (laughs) I'm not gonna lie. That and I, I think this guy's been doing some extra extras behind our backs. Extra what? You're in great shape, bud. I mean, I don't want to out you, but I'm going to out you. I'm proud of you, bud. Really? Yeah, because. I, even a year ago, you you had 
you were yeah, breathing scared. a lot yeah. heavier going up that mountain than you you didn't even do any of that this this year yeah not even breathing hard <laughs> not, not, not even, even no yeah. he wasn't guys i mean I, I I mean it is a, I'm a proud point of, of pride because I the last two or three years and I've I'll, been rough and then going out with Kyle and you know having uh, uh, just some hard goes you know things like that like yeah. I, I just was overweight and shave off you know twenty pounds and you're back in it it's kind of that simple yeah. you know but I mean, I'm going to keep going and uh, but I, I'm. I'm like at 18 pounds right now. So Dude, I'm liking awesome. that keto thing you're doing. You whipped out that freaking uh, wad of hard salami with some Colby Jack cheese, and that hit the spot. I mean, that gave me yeah. another hour oh, and a half, two hours. Diet. I'm just not eating like crap. I used to eat a lot. I never denied myself like yeah, whatever I wanted. You know, if it was a half a stromboli, I ate it. You know, I just never denied myself so now it's just kind of being regular with you know with less yeah and uh and it's more meat and cheeses and fats and things like you that so bad. i guess you could say it's keto i, I, I love just, them fats <laughs> <laughs> but you know i just uh I try not to get excited about it or, or try not to put too much into it. Like, I'm not going to weigh myself all the time and stuff, but I, the proof's in the pudding. Like I was all over the mountain and I didn't stop and I didn't quit and I didn't, you know, it just, it had me excited. That's for sure. But yeah, I appreciate it. I, it it did awesome, not go man. unnoticed. And I, I had, I had to say something. I'm sorry, but don't apologize. Yeah, don't apologize. I'm, just, I'm proud of my bud. Yeah, <laughs> I really am. Yeah, I I appreciate the sweet compliment there. He's you're, a peach. I was going to say that. You're <laughs> absolutely a peach, Bucky. Thank yeah. you. I think we did this current a little bit of justice here. What do you yeah. think, boys? Yeah. As they say. Yeah, better Batman and Superman could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's that mean? They're the Justice League. Gotcha. Now I get it. Before we wrap this up, though, let's hear a little bit from this month's closing sponsor. This episode was also brought to you in part by Protection First Class Outdoors. PFC Lubricants protect and lubricate your firearms, bows, tree stands, and everything else in your outdoor equipment inventory. Your equipment's protected and lubricated during the season, and the deer aren't going to smell you? Come on. You know you need to get some. Head on over and check out everything they've got going on over at pfcoutdoors.com. Stevie. Yes, sir. When we're not out riding Class 5 currents and hiking up mountains, where can yeah. people find us? Losing weights. Losing weights. Hop on over. RuttenRiverPursuits.com. Check us out on all the social media outlets. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Search Rut and River Pursuits. Download and subscribe to the podcast on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Spotify. Every other podcast player out there. And don't forget to check out them YouTubes. Mm-hmm. Check out the YouTube YouTubes. podcast. Yep. Yeah. Leave us a review. I can't wait for people to see the video. <laughs> don't spoil it. Oh, you, no, never mind. Forget it. it can might I, already be I out. Can't, before we end it, I hate to do this, yeah. but well, we had to be, we wanted to get out of the wind on the river, yeah. so we went to, we backed that into the island. Yeah, and uh, you can't. I guess it's frowned upon going on the island because it's pr- private property or whatever. Okay. So we backed our kayaks into the island, and catfish had to take a uh, had to void. Yeah. So when he stepped out of the boat and looked down with his headlamp, yeah, snake, <gasps> water snake. Or whatever it was, copper. Probably a. Yeah. I don't mean to correct you, but it was two water Pit snakes. Viper, viper. Yeah. timber yeah. rattler. <laughs> oh my! So uh, what did he do? Uh, he, you know, shoot it off in his own special way. But man, oh, that man. was. <laughs> It was scary. The big one. I didn't want to be there any longer. Oh, so. yeah. Let's go. Let's, Let's roll. Let's get back in the out, water. Yeah. Done. I'm going out in the, in the wind. So, yeah. But anyway, I'll, I'll leave you guys with that. Mm. 
Yeah, well. Hey, um, some snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them weedless. Yeah. Check out them YouTubes. <laughs> Check out them YouTubes. <laughs> Know what I did? We went to a school. We went to a sunflower field that was as close and picked a few. You hunted hunted sunflowers. I went scouting. Yeah, (laughs) sunflowers. Is that that preseason sunflowers? Preseason scouting in a sunflower. Yeah, Yeah. gotcha. No, that that's it. Nothing. (laughs) You hang some pedal cams. (laughs) Okay. The guide immediately, give me your hand. Guy trusted him, gave him my hand, got my feet up. Saved him. And he goes, I said, what do you want to do now? He goes, can you kick in? I said, heck yes. We kicked in, boom, and we kept on going. It happened that quick. Wow. Boom. Done. David Hasselhoff. Okay, I got I to gotta ask because I know people are going to want to know. Hot dogs. No, we'll get to that. Pulled pork. What if you have to go to the bathroom during those four hours? You know, I would bail out yeah. do it in a calm area. You have to hold it? No, I would just bail out and then do a water evacuation. Yep. <laughs> downstream, facing downstream. So well, you could face an, upstream, an aqua dump, so basically. You, 